Thanks, Tiana, and good morning, everybody. Um, so the title of this session is Using Honeydew Washing to Improve Hair IPM, and sort of the goal here is to share with you some results of how you might incorporate um, you know, strategic honeydew washing into your IPM for Paracilla, and then also highlight some real systems that growers are using um, in the Wenatchee River Valley area. That's, all right, so we're going to start with the causal agents here. Um, if you were in the last session, Louis did a really good job explaining Paracilla and honeydew, but again, remember it's a piercing, sucking mouth part insect and it's feeding on plant phloem. And the excess sugar and water that's, uh, that the insect takes up is actually excreted and that substance we call honeydew. Um, Paracilla is probably the number one honeydew producing pest that you know disrupts our hair production. Remember the adults can feed on a lot of different types of plants, but these nymphs that are the honeydew producers can only complete development on pear. And you can see some photos here of that honeydew bubble. Um, it causes a lot of problems, uh, which I'll get into in a second. And we cannot forget great mealybug. This is another honeydew producer um, same sort of thing where it's got a piercing mouth part and like that picture on the left shows, you know, these have a tendency to settle around the uh, fruit stem in the summer. And then you can imagine that if it's going to start excreting honeydew, that's going to drip right onto the top of that pear and cause a russet and mark it. Um, it has a few gen fewer generations than Scylla per year, um, but can still be quite a nasty pest. And honeydew, Louis talked about this a bit in the last session as well. Um, you know, the number one thing that it's doing is it's marking our fruit, which is causing downgrades on the packing line. So if you look at the series of photos here, you can see that on the left side, it's kind of bright, but you got all these big golden droplets of honeydew that are on the leaf petioles. And we know that they're going to start uh, dripping onto whatever's below it. And then the middle photo, you can see all those trip marks from that honeydew that fell onto that angio pear, starting to cause a mark. And then that picture on the right showing some Bartlett's in the storage or uh, packing facility with all that nasty black russet on it. So not only is it causing those problems, but it also makes the working environment really sticky for farm workers picking any um, field activities that workers might be doing. And remember that it's also a barrier for um, insecticides and potentially for biological control too. So um, certainly if you have a uh, product that needs to make contact with the insect, a bubble of honeydew surrounding the insect is gonna prevent that contact. Um, and this is pretty basic, but when we're talking about honeydew washing, we wanna keep our risk to our fruit low. So. We don't want to see leaves and shoots and stems that look like that uh, photo on the right. You can see all those little bubbles starting to form. Uh, we want to keep things looking clean in our tree uh, so that we have low risk to fruit damage. So when we talk about honeydew washing, we're talking about using uh, water alone or comp water paired with a surfactant to break this honeydew tension and wash it off uh, the plant. Uh, this would be considered a cultural control method. So you're altering the environment in the orchard and getting that sticky honeydew off. So we consider this to be compatible with integrated pest management and compatible with biological control, which is a plus because um, we know how important that is for managing Scylla in the summer. Um, it does have definite downsides too. Remember, it's going to increase moisture by a lot. Uh, we would only use this type of system uh, overhead washing of honeydew when fire blight risk is low. Um, certainly you would have to consider your spray schedule and residuals since the wash is going to remove any spray materials that might be on leaves and fruits. I would say that's particularly important when we're considering our uh, moth pests like cobbling moth. And then um, also sprinkler rot, which is water molds or phytophthora, 
that are present in the irrigation water can be an issue in late summer. I've never seen it become um, an issue on a large scale, uh, but it can actually infect fruit that are still growing on the tree. And so um, here I'm gonna describe um, an experiment that we did this year. So we've been working on uh, IPM management of Paracilla. We've seen some variable results in terms of fruit quality, uh, possible marking during the summer when we don't have good natural enemy populations uh, established yet. And we wanted to look at, okay, so we're seeing these variable results. Can we use honeydew washing to um, basically improve the success of IPM? So we had uh, four sites that were under IPM management. They're using a, a program that differs a little bit from conventional management. It's in, designed to increase biological control in the orchard. And while we weren't able to exactly do uh, an overhead wash within these blocks, we were able to do a timed wash um, from a handgun. So with this experiment, we basically flagged trees as wash trees or uh, non-wash trees. And for the wash trees, they were sprayed with a handgun from a packed black sprayer. This was done at two time points when the elite, when the leaves in those orchards appeared sticky. So in the middle of July, in the middle of August, we did have some different tree sizes across these blocks. So um, some on small trees, uh, the treatment was basically wash until the leader is dripping. Um, so for a small tree that was about four or five gallons. And then for the larger trees, which are more, much more common in this area, that would be more than 12 gallons per tree. Um, and we had four sites, we had 11 to 20 trees per site. Keep in mind, same exact spray program. We measured the honeydew uh, one day post-treatment and then the anjo fruit was graded uh, at harvest or about a week, a week within harvest. Um, and I want to explain this honeydew measurement for a second here. So the way that we're measuring honeydew, which is shown on the y-axis here, is we're actually collecting 50 leaves from a tree and then putting that in a jar with 50 mils of the ionized water and then washing those leaves. And then we take that uh, leaf wash and we actually run that through a refractometer and we can measure the bricks on that. So that's what I'm showing here. So we had two sites of these four that got really sticky. And here you can see one of them um, in the IPM, which is the no wash. You can see that uh, those uh, bars are above 0.5 bricks or close to it. Um, 0.5 is a number that I've kind of noticed where you can really start to observe those leaves as being sticky. Um, so it's starting to get into the point where we consider it risky for our fruit. And you can see here that after the wash, just this uh, short time to wash, we got that honeydew amount on the leaves down to a significantly lower level, about 0 0.3, 0 0.2, both in July and August. Similar, similarly, at this plot, um, it was approaching this 0.5 line um, in July and got well above it in August. And we were able to bring that honeydew level down to a much more manageable level, about 0.2 in both cases. We also had two sites that just didn't really get that sticky, but we still applied the wash treatment there. So here you can see uh, plot 12. And uh, even though the honeydew wasn't really exceeding, you know, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 in July and August, we still saw a significant effect in the wash treatment, what brought it down to a lower level. And then this fourth block here, this plot, uh, in July, you can see that honeydew level was just really low and there wasn't any difference between wash and non-wash. I mean, that's down below 0.1. So we're talking not very much honeydew. And it got a little bit stickier in August, but um, not that bad, but still our wash treatment brought it down to a significantly lower level. So when we're thinking about managing honeydew uh, with, a, with a washing strategy, what we learned from this experiment was uh, when the honeydew was excessive, uh, where it got above 0.5, the tree washing decreased that leaf honeydew back down to a lower level. And even in these situations with low honeydew, um, tree washing decreased honeydew even further. We have another poll question here. 
about um, how your honeydew washing system has either maintained good fruit or reduced sprays. I'll let that run while I go ahead here. So um, let me go too far ahead. Yeah. Um, so in comparing our, our fruit quality at the end of the season, this is when we graded at harvest. So we graded those anjos as US one or fancy or, or coals. And here's our two sticky plot examples. With plot five, we didn't see any difference between the fruit and the wash treatment versus the non-wash. And um, that might be just because it got sticky later, later in the season. It didn't really have a chance to cause a mark. Um, however, with this other plot, 29, we saw a really big effect um, where about 17% more US ones were in the wash treatment relative to the non-wash treatment. And I realized the magnitude of these packouts for both these packouts um, for 29 isn't very good, but a 17% difference is a big deal in terms of um, the return for the grower. And then with these two sites that didn't get very sticky, I should mention, you know, these two sites are in Kashmir area. These two are in Dryden and Pashastin. Um, we didn't see any difference in terms of uh, fruit quality, but remember they had stickiness that wasn't really uh, at any point risky to the fruit. So in this most extreme case, the tree washing saved more than 15% of the fruit from a downgrade. But in situations with low honeydew, we didn't really see an effect because we know that, that fruit really wasn't at risk. So uh, we're certainly not advocating that people go out there with a handgun um, and start uh, washing their fruit. I think that would probably be really time consuming. However, it kind of gives you a picture of how a targeted system could be used just at two time points um, and really have a big difference in terms of amount of honeydew that's accumulating in your block and uh, the, the quality of the fruit that you're picking at harvest. So now we're gonna transition into these case studies. Um, so we focused on four different orchards in the Wenatchee area. Um, and these are you know, real growers using real systems. Um, and we're gonna go into some of the, um, the technical stuff with those systems and look at um, how it impacted mainly honeydew. Starting with Gale Orchards. So I mentioned that honeydew uh, washing is nothing new. And certainly this is a good example of that. I mean, this is an old, old system. You can see the metal pipe in the photo there. It's delivering a lot of water, 80 gallons per minute per acre. Um, it is uh, probably cost prohibitive to install something like this because this is completely separate from their under tree irrigation. It's many decades old. I, but I thought it was important to include this here because these systems do exist um, around the valley and people are using them. Um, in the case of 2020, you know, things didn't get super sticky at this particular site, but you can see some honeydew globs at the photo on the left for the pre-wash and how clean those leaves look in the post-wash. And looking at the, the honeydew level that we measured, here we've got a six hour set that the grower did probably around when Bartlett's were harvested at the end of August. And you can see that the honeydew level really just didn't get to a very high level in the pre-wash treatment. Um, but we don't have any statistics here because it's just one site without replication, but you can see that level went, he went down a little bit in the post-wash. And some grower comments here, uh, he goes back and forth between irrigating over and under tree and generally would do one pass of the overheads before he applies a spray. Next, I want to focus on RC orchards. So this is a much newer system. It was installed in 2020. Um, can deliver 75 gallons per minute per acre. Um, it's on a 30 by 40, 40 fit, foot grid. And it's a separate system that ties into the existing valve risers. So what I mean by that is that here you can see the system. You can see basically they've taken this 10 foot piece of PVC pipe and they've decided to use an R2000 uh, sprinkler head 
and I included some of the specifics on the angle and such there. But basically they've uh, clamped, crimped on the stake and they've made it into a hook shape and they're hooking that around like one of the tallest leaders in the tree to get that sprinkler head to the height that they desire. And you can kind of see in the photo how that worked. And then down at the lower end of that pipe, um, basically you can see they've they had their old uh, irrigation system and they built a T and then, then they put in this one inch poly and that's where they hooked in the 10 millimeter tubing that connected the PVC to their water source. Um, and in terms of cost per acre, parts and labor considered here about $940. Let's see how it did. Um, not a ton of honeydew when I took this photo, but you can see a glob forming where the red circle is and how clean the leaves at right are. Um, remember this was installed in 2020. So when the grower installed this, they did a couple 24 hour sets to just really wash the, the leaves off and get the honeydew manageable. And indeed you can see in July, um, the pre-wash, how, how high that honeydew level got and then how low it got after doing the 24 hour set. Um, this grower usually allows two to three days of drying before he sprays. And you can see that he switched to shorter sets, I believe 12 hours in August. And you can just see how much more under control that honeydew is with a really low reading at pre-wash. Um, and while it's not really the focus of this talk, uh, another grower comment, washing improved the efficacy of organic and conventional pesticides against Scylla by removing so-called honeydew armor. The next example we have here is from Keene Orchards. This is in Peshastin. Could deliver a little bit less water, uh, 50 to 65 gallons per minute per acre on a pretty large grid, 60 by 40 feet. This one's a little bit different in that they're doing under tree irrigation and then they're doing a switch to over tree in July. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So in this case, you'll see a lot of similarities between the last system. They've got this PVC pipe. Um, in their case, they've got a mix of R2000s and old rain bearded impacts as a sprinkler head. Tree attachment's the same. Um, however, basically what they've done here is they're taking the sprinkler head that was previously used for their under tree, which you can kind of see um, here at, in the circle photo there. And they're connecting that 10 millimeter tubing to the bottom of the PVC and then that sprinkler head moves to the top. So they're moving their irrigation up to over the canopy. Um, and they're doing that switch in probably July when they get towards the harvest period. And that's a one-way switch. Like they're not going to switch back to under tree within the season. Um, and that's something they do every year in the blocks where they have this installed. A little bit cheaper to do this system. It was about $660 per acre. This is probably one of the better photos I got just showing, oops, sorry, showing the uh, difference here. See all those bubbles forming at left and just how nice and clean those leaves look at right. And this grower used 12 hour sets. We were able to measure two times. You can see it started to get a little bit sticky in the August timing. And then it got much stickier in September when they were getting really close to harvest. But you can see that after washing that honeydew level is back down to a totally manageable level. Um, and this grower installed it in a problem block because as quoted here, you know, half of the grower returns can be lost from bad silo marking. Um, and they also believe that their wash is removing this honeydew bubble around the insect and improving their next spray's efficacy. And lastly, I want to focus on this Schmitten Orchards example. So this is in Dryden. This system was installed in 2018. Uh, delivers about 60 to 70 gallons per minute per acre uh, and a little bit smaller spacing, 40 by 24 feet. And it's a dual system, so it has valves that allow them to switch between under and over tree. Um, here you can see 
they've got the PVC piping and it's basically got structural support from this wood, tall wood stake. And then down at the bottom, you can see they've got these red valves that allow them to switch between over and under tree. So they can actually go back and forth. It just requires somebody probably riding through the orchard and doing all those valve switches. This system was a little bit, uh, probably the most expensive one at $1,100 per acre. Um, but it did a really good job, which I'll show you here. You can see during the pre-wash, all those bubbles forming, troubling situation. And then at post-wash, there's really not much honeydew left. And I circled the, I don't know if you can see, there's some orange dots there. Those are kind of dried up young scylla that used to have a honeydew bubble around them, but now are probably at risk of dying because they removed their armor. And here you can see they did 12 hour sets at this block. Um, in both the July and August example, the honeydew levels started to get concerning, particularly in August, but after the wash, uh, back down to a totally manageable level. And a quote from this grower, which I think is pretty telling, uh, I believe we're doing one less spray here due to washing and that's saving us 300 to $600 per acre. Um, and this system has paid for itself within two years. And the whole thing with system paying for itself, I think was a common thread when talking to all the growers that have installed these systems. They all kind of agreed that it pays for itself in a really short time period. So to wrap things up here, uh, when we're talking honeydew washing, there are limitations. Remember I talked about fire blight risk. You'd never want to use this during the risky time of year. You're going to want to watch your spray residuals if you're using it, particularly um, with regards to cobbling moth. Um, watch out for sprinkler rot. Consider how much water you're able to actually use. Um, it's cultural control method compatible with integrated pest management. And we've kind of advocated it for you know, doing a strategic timed uh, wash when you see that honeydew level get uh, concerning, you know, probably in July, August. Um, but these growers have shown that you can use it frequently to keep honeydew levels low or as a target strategy. Um, and amongst the systems we looked at today, um, for the system that you want to install anyways, uh, the costs ranged from $660 to $1,100 per acre. I already touched on this, but um, most of the growers I spoke to all agree that the system that they installed paid for itself quickly, either through their savings in fruit quality or through fewer sprays or both. Um, and as I wrap up here, I want to point out that all of the systems that I discussed today are online. So we have a new sort of case study fact sheet out. And that's what that first link is showing. Should be pretty easy to find if you go to the Pair IPM uh, webpage on treefruit.wcu.edu. And I also put the link to the home for Pair IPM, which includes not only these honeydew washing systems, but some of the trials that Louie talked about in the previous session and scouting results from the work we've been working on for the last four years. And I want to thank all the grower collaborators as well as field staff that helped with this project, as well as the technical support, uh, Gerardo Garcia helped me with uh, doing those tree washes, as well as Abby and Ellie and Ricardo from Gianna's lab were super helpful. Um, so thanks for listening and I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have.